Hello everyone, welcome back to Explorer Electronics. In this video, let us discuss the syllabus of third semester subject of Electronics and Communication Engineering and Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering branch. So these two branch students are going to learn this common subject, Digital System Design using Verilog. So this subject will be basically on digital electronics and they have introduced the digital electronic concepts with the coding using hardware description language Verilog. So let us see how actually the content of this syllabus will be and I am going to cover this complete subject in my video as a new playlist. You can go through these videos to get into the subject knowledge. So here in this subject with the code 21 EC32, this subject need to be covered with theory as well as lab. So three hours, you can see here teaching hours per week. This three is for lecture hours and this two for practical hours. So three plus two five hours per week will be covered with three theory hours and two practical hours. So totally 40 hours theory plus 13 lab slots will be allotted for this subject in the third semester. And CAE marks will be 50. SE marks is also 50 and total marks is 100. This is same as the other subjects which you have studied in previous semester and exam hours is 3 hours. And here the thing we need to observe carefully is that how they are going to divide this CIE SE marks for the theory as well as lab aspects. So let us uh, see below so that we will be getting the information of that. And this course is going to cover what are all the things the students are able to do after completing this course means those are the course objectives stated here to impart the concepts of simplifying boolean expressions using kmap technique and queen maklewski minimization technique so these two techniques need to be studied by students so that at the end of this course they are able to simplify boolean expressions using these two techniques and to impart the concepts of designing and analyzing combinational circuits. So combinational logic circuits need to be designed and analyzed by the students and then to impart design methods and analysis of sequential logic circuits. Combinational logic circuits and sequential logic circuits are going to be discussed in this subject. To impart the concepts of Verilog HDL, data flow and behavioral models for the design of digital systems. For these combinational logics and sequential logics, students has to impart the concepts of Verilog HDL concepts using data flow modeling and behavioral modeling. So this is what the main agenda of the course. We can consider it as course objectives. So then coming to each and every modules, the first module consisting of module one is principles of combinational logic. Here the definition of combination logic, canonical forms and generation of switching equations of truth tables and k maps up to four variables to simplify the boolean expression and also queen maklewski minimization technique and queen maklewski using don't care terms this covers the module one here in module one they are concentrating on only the combinational logic how to simplify the boolean expression for that combinational logic using k map and queen maklewski minimization method and coming to module two you have logic design with MSI components and programmable logic devices. Here MSI stands for medium scale integration. So which are uh, components like adders, comparators, decoders, encoders. These are called as medium scale integration components. So with that they are introducing programmable logic device here. So this is module 2. Uh, in book if you consider they have given different textbooks at the end of this syllabus content. Textbook 1 that is section 3.1 to 3.5 that covers module 1 and module 2 is section 5.1 to 5.7 of textbook 2. Similarly, if you look at module 3, here is the flip-flop and applications. Here comes the sequential circuits and design. So flip-flops and applications are introduced here in module 3. This covers master-slave flip-flop and then the application of flip-flops such as counters, registers, and uh, binary counter shift registers you can see design of synchronous mod encounters also covered in this module starting from flip-flop up to 
modern counter design using different flip flops is covered in module 3 this is section 6.4 to 6.9 of textbook 2 and then coming to module 4 here comes the Verilog concept the first three modules gives us the content about designing combinational circuits and sequential circuits for those combinational sequential circuits we need to write the hardware description language that is Verilog code if you write the Verilog code a tool will synthesize that and give you the hardware what we are going to get that is the use of Verilog so here Verilog is introduced introduction to Verilog and data flow description is covered in module 4 and then coming to module 5 here behavioral description of that Verilog is covered here again those concepts which we have discussed in the previous modules such as sequential circuits and other concepts in the behavioral description we need to write the code there are two methods here one is data flow description another one is behavioral description we need to understand how to write the code in these two and also they have introduced Verilog structural description how the structural description of Verilog will be there and they have given few concepts here to write using structural description that is ripple carry adder using the structural description this is section 4.1 to 4.2 of text 3 and this Verilog concepts covered in text 3 here also text 3 is mentioned here also text 3 is mentioned and text 1 and 2 for first two modules this is what the syllabus content is as I said this subject will also be having practical component so two hours out of five hours per week will be a practical component where the experiments you can see here to simplify the boolean expressions and realize using Verilog program and then data flow description for half adder and full adder need to be written and then ALU and then gray to binary and binary to gray then binary to XS3 and XS3 to binary and then multiplexer encoder priority encoder similarly demultiplexer and comparator and decoder and then comes the sequential circuit part counters and uh, using these flip flops so flip flop is one experiment and then counter is the other experiment these first eight are corresponds to the coding part they are not going to be downloading into any FPG kit and checking for the interfacing output so the next four 9 10 11 12 are considered as motor to FPGA so here uh, FPGA need to be used any kind of FPGA or CPLD will be used in the lab and we need to interface the stepper motor to FPGA and we need to control that stepper motor using a code Verilog program to interface a relay similarly as we control the stepper motor here relay need to be controlled or ADC and then DAC and similarly LED and switches so this is what the practical component in this subject and for CIE only demonstration experiments uh, for CIE only not to be included in SE so these four are not to be included in any SE these four only for the demonstration purpose the first eight can be considered for CIE and also for SE these eight are very very important and how the CIE and SE will be conducted you can see here assessment details for both CIE and SE these contents are all same as your previous subjects no need to go in detail coming here CIE for theory component and two tests will be conducted for 20 marks first test will be at the end of fifth week and second test will be at the end of tenth week and then two assign assignments will be given for 10 marks uh, before the first CIE and the second CIE usually they give two assignments and these marks of CIE will be scaled down of two marks and two assignments added up will be CIE marks for theory component for 30 marks out of 50 marks 30 marks for CIE what you are going to write as theory and for practical component it will be 15 marks are conducted experiments and 5 marks will be uh, allocated for the text con test conducted at the end of the semester this 15 marks will be given for conducting the experiment in regular basis throughout the semester and this 5 marks will be given for the test conducted at the end of the semester 
and then and then each and every uh, practical hours or the practical sessions will be evaluated you can see here each experiment reported can be evaluated for 10 marks and then marks of all experiments write ups can be added and scaled down to 15 marks finally and then laboratory test that is the so lab ci we can say that is for duration of 3 hours at the end of 15th week means last week of the semester and the completion of all experiments shall be conducted for 50 marks they will be conducting ci of this particular practical component for 50 marks and they will scale down to 5 marks so practical component will be evaluated finally for 5 marks from the laboratory test at the end of the semester and with that the 15 marks will be allocated on the daily um, experiment conducting basis so totally 20 marks will be allocated for the practical component 30 marks will be allocated for the theory component for CIE and coming to SCE how SCE will be calculated so you can see SCE will be for 3 hours for 100 marks each question will be consisting of 20 marks from each module and there will be two questions from each module there might be three sub questions this is again same as you have seen previous exam question papers but here the thing is that since it is a practical portion included with the uh, subject here the maximum of four to five questions to be set from the practical component of IPCC the total marks of questions should not be more than 20 marks so in question paper four or five questions from the practical component must be there and these questions carries minimum 20 marks should not go more than 20 marks is the criteria here so practical component is also having a weightage of CIE as well as SE here but SE will not be conducted separately for the practical component it will be included in the SE paper they will ask to write the code in between the module theory questions and coming to the textbook these are all the prescribed textbook three textbook they have mentioned here you can see in the syllabus copy also they have uh, clearly mentioned which component of this textbook will covers module 1 module 2 and module 3 these three textbooks are required to learn this particular subject these are the reference textbooks you can also refer the concepts from these which relates to the content of the syllabus this is what the syllabus of this subject I am going to cover this subject completely in my channel you can go through this digital system design using Verilog content once again and you can start following my videos thank you